Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome to Jesus the Healer. We are so thankful that you're with us. And uh, we're just thankful to share the word with you because I want you to know that we're never disappoints. That word is our life. Amen. And so we've been ministering out of my book called Victory Over Grief and Sorrow because it's important to know what to do in the face of the emergencies of life because they're coming to everybody. I don't care who you are. Having faith doesn't mean that circumstances... Uh, opposing circumstances uh, bypass you. It means that you just know what to do in the face of circumstances. Right. And right. you know the outcome. That's right. What is the outcome? Victory outcome. Yes. Every yes. single time. Amen. To walk in our victory, we have to know something. Mm -hmm. You know, victory belongs to us, but it does matter what we know. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, God spoke and he said, My people are destroyed mm -hmm. for the lack of knowledge. Right. <clears throat> that word destroyed um, in, some, in some connotation is um, cut off. Mm -hmm. yes. My people are cut off mm -hmm. from the blessings of God mm -hmm. through the lack of knowledge. Yes. So when we don't know what we need to know, what, what should flow doesn't always flow because we've cut off the flow yes. um, by not knowing. Wow. So we have to know some things. Yes. And then not only that, we have to believe what we know right. of the word. Yes. And we have to be a doer of it. So we've been talking about, because I've referred to during the many broadcasts here on Jesus the Healer, I've referred to at different times my husband's unexpected sudden home going. How did we address that? How did the family handle that? What's the right thoughts? What's the right way to think in the face of something like that? Because it's not just the home going mm -hmm. of a loved one that can uh, open the door to grief or sorrow. But what about if a business is lost, a home is lost, a relationship falls apart, a marriage falls apart, a home, something is broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> we need to know that God's, God's word is enough for those times. Yes. I said God's word yes. is enough, yes. but we have to be a doer of the word. Yes. Yes. Uh, we've been reading as our keynote scripture, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4, where it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. So now we know grief and sorrow is not to be the outcome. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's not to be the finish flow yes. of our life right. because Jesus bore it so that we wouldn't have to live That's under right. it. Yes. So we know that grief and sorrow is the wrong outcome. Yes. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that when... Um, when a circumstance, maybe someone goes home to be with the Lord. Maybe a home falls apart. A business falls apart. I'm not saying you, you won't weep at those times, but I'm saying we, won't step into the, we don't have to step into the wrong flow. Yes. We don't have to get entrenched in grief yes. and yes. sorrow. Yes. It's one thing to weep, but it's another thing to get entrenched in the wrong yes. flow Amen. That, that colors the rest of your life. So that's what we have to guard against is getting in the wrong flow. You know, when my husband went home to be with the Lord, one of the things that I, uh, I was reminded of within moments that came up in my heart is the verse where it says, God is the husband to the widow, yes. which means this, I am not left on my own. Right. So I say that to any widow out there, mm -hmm. you are not living this life alone. Amen. Yes. God takes it on. He makes it his personal task mm -hmm. to be your husband. Yes. Um, everything that a husband is to you in the sense of security, every, companionship, mm -hmm. um, guidance in, in decisions to be made, God, be, God steps into that role fully. And I tell you what, he is no slacker of a husband. Right. <laughs> and I say it firsthand, amen. Yes. 
So um, my husband was so generous to me. Um, I tell you, he, he spoiled me in a good way. <laughs> if he heard me say that I wanted something, he treated that like his assignment. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. um, in fact, just a few months before he went home to be with the Lord, we were out, we were out driving one day and uh, there passed us a, a, a vintage truck, lots of curves on it. You know, I, I appreciate the artistry of some of those vehicles that were built in, in decades past. And I said, that is a great looking truck. Mm -hmm. And I was just appreciating yeah, it. Yeah. I wasn't requesting one. <laughs> yeah. But he said, you want one? I'll get you one. Mm -hmm. That's how, and he was so excited at the thought of getting for me. That was the, that was his whole mindset mm -hmm. in our marriage. He was so thoughtful. He was so generous mm -hmm. to me. But because he was, I was very mindful to not take advantage of yes, him. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And I did not manipulate mm -hmm. that sincerity and that generosity he had toward me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I remember uh, the day my husband went home to be with the Lord and I was reminded that God is the husband to the widow. And I said, God, I just want to remind you, not that you have to be reminded, but just so we can say it's been said. Um, <laughs> Um, my husband was so good to me. Mm -hmm. He was so watchful mm -hmm. to do his part in our marriage. And I said, you won't be outdone by a man, will you? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. And I said, I know you won't. Mm -hmm. You will not be outdone mm -hmm. by a man. Yes. And I said, so I, even though now this is not a two income house mm -hmm. in the sense of I don't have my husband here, I do not have to live a downgraded life because you have stepped into that role. Yes. I will not yes. cut back. Mm -hmm. I will not yes. remove something from my life. Mm -hmm. And since my husband has gone home to be with the Lord, we owned a home and then we were in the process of building a, a vacation home in a, another state. And that was left unfinished at his home going. And since he went home to be with the Lord, I was able to finish that home plus buy another home paying cash. Yes. Why? Because I did not have to have a downgraded That's life right. because yes. I did not just become a one income household. Amen. 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 I've got a provider. Yes. Amen. And there is no limit on his provision. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I did not think that I automatically had to live a less than life and I had to start cutting back because I had to live within my means. I do live within my means. It's just that God is my means. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. That is not a diminished place. That's not a diminished flow. And um, the enemy would love for you to calculate sure. how much you can have. Mm -hmm. I don't calculate how much I can have. I believe how much Amen. I can have. Amen. I believe. Wonderful. I don't calculate. Yes. And um, I knew this, though, just because I'm now a widow, that did not dismiss me from having to use my faith. That's right. right. Yes. Yes. My husband led our home in the spiritual life. He was a man of faith. Yes. And he led us that way. But one thing he didn't do, he did not try to substitute his faith for my faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He would put, if I could say this, we learned how to share faith responsibilities. That's good. That's That's good. Good. And I would encourage you in your household, yes. even though the husband is the head of the house, he's the head of that family. That Being the head of the family doesn't mean, okay, I get everything my way and you get nothing your way. Right. That's not what that means. That's right. Being the head means you're leading the family in the right flow. Right. You're leading your family in the will of God. Yes. You're leading the family in the plan of God. You're leading your family into a life of faith. Yes. That's what it means to be the, the head of the family. You're, lead, you're finding out God's plan for that family and you're leading that family right. in that. Yeah. And my husband, he would say to me, um, I remember God told us that he was going to give us another home on one occasion. And uh, he said to me, God showed us the home and God showed me the home. Mm -hmm. And um, Ed said, I'll agree with you for that home. But he mm -hmm. said, you know, Nancy, he said, I've got my faith on multiple projects of the ministry. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not going to uh, overload my faith. 
So he said, I'm going to let your faith take the lead in the, in the home. Mm -hmm. Meaning when we get the home, it'll be up to your faith that you get it. And he said, I'm expecting you to use your faith. I said, no problem. (laughs) God told me that's the home and I, I got no problem believing that. And so that's what we mean by sharing faith responsibilities. He wasn't turning over his place of authority. Yes. He was putting a demand on the faith of the people in the household mm-hmm. that we all bring our faith. Yes. Right. And I am so glad that I wasn't just yes. trying to live under the umbrella of his faith. Yes. Yes. What if I didn't have my own faith at the time of his departure? Right. 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 Things would have turned out differently. Sure. Yes. So um, God being the head of my household now, being the husband to my life, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not dismissed from using my faith any more than Ed dismissed right. me from using right. my faith. Yeah. Amen. I remember years ago, I was probably uh, in my late 20s, three or four years ago, and <laughs> don't buy that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I remember I was going through a particular test, and Ed said, he told me later, he didn't tell me at the time, he said, when I got through the other, on the other side of that test, he said, you know, I said to God, I said, God, let me lay my hands on her and pray. And he says, no. He said, uh, for where she's headed, she's got to know how to be skillful with her faith yes. in the face yes. of this opposition. Yes. So see, my husband didn't step in and try to be my savior. Yeah. That's right. No husband is a savior. That's He's right. not the one that, that, uh, that people are to lean on. He, the husband is to lead the family in leaning on God, Amen. not Amen. leaning right. on a human not leaning on an individual. You teach the family, we're leaning on God together. Mm -hmm. And so my husband, uh, he did not allow himself to be leaned on in the the inappropriate way. Don't misunderstand me, we could count on him because he was faithful to our family, but he did not try to be the savior of our family. We have a savior. He pointed us to the savior. Amen. Amen. And there came times when the children, as my sons were growing up, that it put a demand on their faith because that's how you lead people. You expect them to grow up. You don't try to step in and be the spiritual rescue when they need to learn to trust God for themselves as they grow older. Amen. Amen. So I still had to believe God just because I was a widow. That didn't mean that God's going to dump everything on me no more than he did that before my husband left. (laughs) He still expected me to use my faith. And I remember one day I was walking through the house and um, up out of my spirit came this verse in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. And it says this, I will boldly say of the Lord, he is my helper. Mm -hmm. And those words just came out of my mouth without it passing through my mind. I mean, it just came up out of my spirit and I spoke it out. And when I spoke it out, God spoke to me and said, do you know how I help you? And I said, well, I, I thought to myself, well, I think I know, but he's asking me because he wants to answer something. Right. So right. I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to let him answer it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I said, how, how do you help me? And he said, when you put my word in your mouth, then I'm your helper. Then I can help you. He said, if you're not going to put my word in your mouth, I can't help you. I will boldly say of the Lord, he is my helper. Amen. And that's not just for widows. That's for every child of God. Amen. That's how he helps us. He doesn't just help me because I'm a widow. He helps me. Because I say he's my helper. I yes. call him my helper. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, I want you to look at Matthew eight seventeen. Matthew eight seventeen is a familiar verse to us, but we know it as a healing verse, mm-hmm. which it certainly is a healing yes. verse, where it says himself took our infirmities right. and yes. bare our sicknesses. My, 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 what a verse, yes. right? right? But one day God said to me, he said, I want you to uh, not pass over the first part of that verse because sometimes we just skim over the first part because we're getting to the second part. But the first part of the verse says that it might be fulfilled which was spoken. Mm -hmm. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Notice Isaiah was a prophet, but also Isaiah was a man. We could say this, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the man. Man has to say something to give God something to fulfill. The unspoken goes unfulfilled. 
God can only fulfill what is spoken. If I don't call God my helper, he can't be my helper, although he is the helper. He can only be to me what I call him to be. He can only be healer when I call him healer. Even though he is the healer. He can't be what he is until we call him that to us. That's how come people... He, listen, Jesus is the Savior to all mankind. Yes. yes. He's, he's already, he has already paid the price for their salvation, but he can't be their Savior till they call him Savior. Yes. See, Amen. He, he's not Savior because he's provided it. He's Savior because they called it. Amen. We're not healed because he provided it. We're healed because we call him our healer. Yes. Amen. We don't receive divine help because he's our helper. We receive divine help because we call him our helper, yes. that it might be fulfilled, which was which spoken. Was spoken. Mm-hmm. And I say it again, the unspoken goes unfulfilled. <laughs> if something's not being fulfilled, yeah. something's not being spoken. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the more you speak it, the more you give him to fulfill. Yes. Yes. The less we speak it, the less he can fulfill. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I noticed something. God spoke to me. And um, he told me he was going to give me another house. I own three houses now. Amen. Three houses. God. Glory to God. One income so far <laughs> is not two. I'm talking about That's naturally right. speaking. Yes. And I have more than I had. Yes. That's right. Why? Because God is not a slacker of a husband. That's right. <laughs> but when he told me he was going to give me another home, and you say, well, should you have three homes? Well, sinners have three homes. Yeah. Uh, That's right. Politicians have multiple yeah. homes. Yes. You know, people of fame have multiple That's homes. Right. And yes. That's right. God's people. He did, Listen, <laughs> I love something Dad Hagen used to say. Uh, God filled the earth with, with goodness and it wasn't for the devil and his children. Absolutely, yes. It's for God and his people. That's right. Amen. Amen. Not just letting, the, not just letting uh, those who don't know God take it all. That's right. Uh-oh. Amen. God's Amen. blessed us with every spiritual Amen. blessing. Well, I just don't know that we should have a lot. Well, you need to see heaven and let that redefine some things yes. for you. Yes. That's right. Read the word. That'll redefine some things for you. Believe the word. That'll redefine some things for us, right? And uh, <clears throat> I'm just, I bless people with those homes. I mean, I, I host people and it's, it's just a blessing. And not only that, it's an example. That's right. Just because your spouse isn't here doesn't mean you have to live a less than version of abundance. Abundance can still look like abundance. It doesn't have to look like a, an abbreviated version of abundance. And so when God told me he was going to give me another home, I, uh, I remember he would come. I mean, his presence would come so strongly into the back room where I would sit. And he would talk to me about the home. He would describe the home before I even knew what, which home it was. He'd talk to me about the way, the way it was painted. He would give me the details about the home. And I said, God, I said, you have walked me through every single detail of this home. And I said, listen, I so appreciate it, but I don't ever remember having a place of fellowship with you like this where there was the intimacy mm-hmm. of the details so, so much like this. And he said to me, he said, if, if your husband were still there with you. He said, these are the things you would have sat and discussed with him. He's not there with you. So I have come to discuss them with you. What's that mean? I moved into a place of fellowship that I didn't know until I was a widow. Yes. Why? Because now he's not just a father. Now he's a husband. Yes. And until he's that husband, your, your, your own husband mm-hmm. fills that role. So he's not duplicating that role yes. because he's authorized your husband to fulfill that. Mm-hmm. But when the husband isn't there, then he fulfills it That's personally. So, good. <laughs> so I am, I tell you what, um, I, I was even talking to my kids about it today with, with business decisions and ministry decisions. I said, everything I've done since my husband's home going of business, decisions I've made, how I've handled different business, business aspects. I said, it all came from the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. God spoke that to me. Why? Because he knows uh, he's the husband. Yes. He's not going to let me fail. That's 
That's right. right. And I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to listen. He'll lead us all by his spirit, but he's not only a father to me, he's an additional role of a husband. That's right. So I have divine help with my personal business and with my ministry business. Amen. Hallelujah. So I saw in such a precious way that even the intimacy a fellowship that I carried with my husband wasn't lost. Wow. God has picked yes. that up. Yeah. That the intimate details of everyday life, that I'll sit down and I'll tell him details just like I would of any, mm. my husband. Mm. And I expect conversation. Yes. I expect Amen. fellowship. I expect his input and mm. he gives it. Why? Because he is that role. And I know this, I, I'll never ever be lonely. Yes. That's right. Yes. yes. Aloneness is not the same thing as loneliness. Do I find myself alone more? Sure I do. It's not a negative. Right. Why? Because I'm not there alone. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I put a demand mm-hmm. on my divine husband Amen. Amen. and I fellowship with him yes. in that yes. way, in that role. Just know this, a spirit of loneliness can try to come and trouble someone's life to where they sense, they feel the absence. God will fill that place with himself. Yeah, amen. Amen. I am, I am never lonely. Have there been times when that sense of loneliness tried to come? Yes. And when it does, I talk to it and I say, no, you don't. You leave. I will not be troubled because loneliness is troubling. Yes. It's a troubling thing. And I have... Um, I, 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 I answer it. I resist it. I talk to it. Amen. Amen. I value who God is enough to me as that husband to not let loneliness try to rob me from who he is in that role. You will not diminish my father as the husband of my life now in that role. That's right. Amen. I will not say God is my husband and be lonely. That's Won't right. do it. Right. Won't do it. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who are widows or widowers, this is a new season. It's a new chapter. And some of you will face this in upcoming years. It's a new season. It's a new chapter. It's not a less than season. That's right. That's right. It's not a less than chapter. It's all in how you approach it. God's word, along with his fellowship, his strength, his power, his ability is still yours. I love what Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Mm -hmm. Now see, if I'm going to say, well, when my husband died, my life lost something. Well, in the natural sense, yes. Mm -hmm. But God has filled that place with himself. Right, Mm -hmm. right, right. I refuse to say that the years after my husband's exit become less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. This word is still true. The path of the righteous, that's my path. Yes. That's your path. Yes. It grows brighter and brighter, yes. not lonelier and darker. That's right. I will not. Yes. I will not call yes. my path something different than God calls it. He calls it a path that gets brighter and brighter. Yes. And that's the way my path is. That's the way your path is. Yes. What is going to keep the door closed to grief and sorrow? How you think? Mm. Yes. Thinking, right? Yes. right? Absolutely. Amen. Now, what you have to guard against is you can't look, you can't lean on other people trying to get attention from them mm-hmm. by playing the alone card. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm alone now. Well, and, and, and try to, if I could say this, get people to mm-hmm. give you attention because sure. of that. That'll get you attention, but not the kind of attention that, that you need. Uh-huh. Not the kind That's of attention right. that you want and That's not the right. kind of attention that will help you. Mm-hmm. It gets you the wrong kind of attention. It gets you the kind of attention that turns you towards yourself, looking at mm-hmm. what, what I don't have instead of focusing on how much, how much you do have. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have to walk in the light of the Word. Amen. Amen. I said we have to walk yes. in the light Amen. of the Word. The word is true regardless who's here or who's not here. Amen. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Amen. 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 <clears throat> um, there has to be a readjusting in the thought life. Mm-hmm. Yes. But let God define for you 
how you think towards that season. Don't let your feelings define for you how you think about the season. Don't let your emotions define it. You let God in his word define it. Amen. Amen. I so appreciate part of, part of how I think, of course, it comes from the word, but it was right, some right thinking in this was put into me by my mother. When we were growing up, mother would say, it's a bad habit to have to be around somebody before you're happy. She said, learn to be happy while you're alone. She thought it was, uh, and you know, some people are more social than other people. I understand that. But she said, you need to learn to be completely enjoying your life if no one is around you. You need to learn to be alone. And she said, if you can't be alone and be happy, you're missing something. Uh Well, see, this is, thank God, uh, what we would call alone for the believer, we're never alone. That's right. We're never alone. Amen. Don't ever call yourself alone when God said he'll never leave you nor That's forsake right. you. Right. Don't you ever say something against the word. That's mm. right. The devil will take advantage of that. That's true. And you'll start feeling alone if you talk about and think in terms of I'm alone. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. He will never leave me Amen. nor forsake me. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we've been teaching out of my book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow, and we want you to get hold of your copy. You can go to deframeministries.org and we'll get that right into your hands once you purchase that from us. And uh, before we go today, though, I want to pray with those of you who you say, Pastor Nancy, I've been struggling with this place of being alone. I want you to know God will fill it with himself. I said God will fill it with himself. But you stretch out your hand toward me as a sign I'm releasing my faith. And I say, Satan, you take your hands off their mind. You take your hands off their home. You take your hands off of their future. And we speak the peace of God, the blessing of God upon their life. And we thank you for overflowing joy in Jesus' name. And we take it. And everybody said, amen. Amen. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In the book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow, Nancy Dufresne shares from firsthand experience how even death is no match for the mighty force of peace that is available to every believer. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. In this book, Peace, Living Free from Worry, Nancy Dufresne teaches us how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you would like to share a testimony or let us know how this ministry has blessed you, we would love to hear from you. Please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach but a spirit-led format. Romans chapter one, verse 11, Paul said, for I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. 
This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning, but this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yeah. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I built here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing. If you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play. And you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful. And you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible school, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed in my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not gonna regret it. You're gonna build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.